Sarah Palin took a few minutes off the stump today to take an important call. A foreign leader, one of our allies, on the phone to show his support for her and John McCain, or so she thought. Unfortunately for Sarah Palin, she got punked. Bad. The Republican vice presidential nominee thought she was chatting with French President Nicolas Sarkozy. Let's put it this way. She wasn't. In fact, for nearly seven minutes, Palin allowed herself to be engaged by two notorious Canadian radio pranksters, the comedy duo known as the Masked Avengers. This is Bexie. Hello, Bexie. Hi. Hi, this is uh, Frank Louvrier. Uh, I'm with uh, President Sarkozy on the line for uh, Governor Palin. Yes, one second, please. Can you hold on one second, please? Yeah, no problem. All right, thanks. Hi, I'm going to hand the phone over to her. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to put the president on the line. Okay, he's coming to the line. Okay. This is Sarah. Uh, yeah, uh, Governor Palin. Hello. Uh, j j just hold on for uh, President Sarkozy, one moment. Oh, it's not okay. him yet, Betsy. I always do that. Yes, yes, hello, Governor Palin. I'll just have people hand it yes. to you. Yes, hello, Mrs. Governor. Hello, this is Sarah. How are you? Fine, and you? This is uh, Nicolas Sarkozy speaking. How are you? Oh, so good. It's so good to hear you. Thank you for calling us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you, sir. We have such great respect for you, John McCain and I. We love you, and thank you for spending two minutes to talk to me. I followed your campaigns closely with my special American advisor, Johnny Hallyday, you know? Yes, good. Excellent. Uh, are you confident? Very confident, and we're thankful that polls are showing that the race is tightening. And Well, I know very well that the campaign can be exhausting. How do you feel right now, my dear? I feel so good. I feel like we're in a, a marathon, and at the very end of the marathon, you get your second win, and you plow through the finish. You see, I got elected in France because I'm real, and you seem to be someone who's real as well. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Nicholas, we so appreciate this opportunity. You know, I see you as a president uh, one day, you too. <laughs> Maybe in eight years. <laughs> well, I, I hope for you. You know, we have a lot in common because personally, one of my favorite activities is to hunt too. Oh, very good. We should go hunting together. Exactly. We could go try hunting by helicopter like uh, you did. I never did that. <laughs> like we see in French, on pourrait tuer des bébés phoques aussi. Well, I think we could have a lot of fun together as we're getting work done. We can, we can kill two birds with one stone that way. I just love killing those animals. Mm -mm. Take away your life. That is so fun. <laughs> I'd really love to go as long as we don't bring a Vice President Cheney. <laughs> No, I'll be a careful shot, yes. <laughs> yes, you know, we have a lot in common also, because except that from my house, I can see Belgium. That's kind of less interesting than you. Well, see, we're right next door to other countries that we all need to be working with, yes. Some people said in the last days, and I, I thought that was mean, that you weren't experienced enough in foreign relations. And, you know, that's completely false. That's the, the, the thing I said to my great friend, the Prime Minister of Canada, Steph Kars. Well, he's doing fine, too. And, yeah, when you come into a position underestimated, it gives you an opportunity to prove the pundits and the critics wrong. You work that much harder. I, I was wondering, uh, because you are so next to him, one of my good friends, also the Prime Minister of Quebec, Mr. Richard Z. Sirois, have you met him uh, recently? Uh, did, did he come to one of your rallies? I haven't seen him at one of the rallies, but it's been great working with the Canadian officials in my mm -hmm. role as governor. We have a great cooperative uh, effort there as we work on all of our resource development projects. You know, I look forward to working with you and getting to meet you personally and your beautiful wife. Oh, my goodness. You've added a lot of energy to your country, even with um, <laughs> with that beautiful family of yours. Thank you very much. You know, my wife, Carla, would love to meet you. Uh, you know, even though she was a bit jealous that I was supposed to speak to you today. <laughs> <laughs> well, give her a big hug from me. You know, my wife is a popular singer and a former hot top model, and she's so hot in bed. She even wrote a song for you. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. Yes, uh, in French it's called Du Rouge à Lèvres sur une cochonne, or if you prefer in English, Joe the Plumber. It's his life, Joe the Plumber. Maybe she understands some of the unfair criticism, but I bet you she is such a hard worker, too, and she realizes you just plow through that criticism. I, I just want to be sure. I, I don't quite understand the, the phenomenon, uh, Joe the Plumber. That, that's not your husband, right? 
that's not my husband, but he's a normal American who just works hard and doesn't want government to take his money. Yes, yes, I understand. We have uh, the equivalent of the, Joe the Plumber in France. It's called Marcel, the guy with bread under his armpit. Uh, we... Right. That's what it's all about is the middle class and government needing to work for them. You're a very good example for us here. Uh, I seen a bit about NBC. Even Fox News wasn't an ally, an ally sorry, about uh, as much as usual. Yeah, that's what we're up against. I must say, Governor Pellin, I love the documentary they made on your life. You know, uh, Hustlers Nailin Pellin? Oh, good. Thank you. Yes. That was really edgy. Oh, good. I really loved you. <laughs> And I, I, I must say something also, Governor. Uh, you've been pranked by the Masked Avengers. We are two comedians from Montreal. Oh, have we been pranked? And you what have, radio station is this? This is for CKOI in Montreal. In Montreal? Tell me their radio station call letters. CK? Hello? If one voice can change the world for Obama, one Viagra can change the world for I, McCain. I'm sorry. I... I'm sorry. I have to um, let you go. Thank you. Yeah! Woohoo! Somewhat uh, puzzling that no red flags were raised when the Sarkozy impersonator named French singer Johnny Alliday as his special American advisor, or that he referred to Canadian singer Steph Kars as Canada's Prime Minister. Meantime, here's a reaction to the call, which took four days to set up. Palin Scamp said she was, quote, mildly amused, c'est la vie, quipped the spokesman, spokesperson Tracy Schmidt. David Wade, speaking for her rival Joe Biden, said, quote, sounds like the same people who didn't vet Sarah Palin didn't vet her calls.